What is going on guys? Today we got a brand new video, the long awaited video you guys have just been asking for. You guys have seen on Instagram, I posted on my story. You guys seen headlights, halos, LED strip, headlight build, baby. Today we're gonna be doing the custom headlight build on my Mazda 3 sedan. We have the BMW M4 Crystal. Halos, the hexagon shape. I'm super excited for those. We have a sequential turn signal LED strip. We're gonna be positioning this in a way, hopefully, we've never seen before. If not, there may be only a couple people, but I have an idea. So today, this is my first time actually building a set of headlights. So I'm gonna kinda walk you guys through what I'm doing, but you guys are also gonna see some mistakes that I'm doing as well. It's not necessarily a tutorial, but something you can follow along with in case you guys are wanting to do this yourself. I just know how to take the headlights out. Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. I like this shirt? Check it out at McGillRacingDivision.com, baby. Boom! This link, is fire. Link in the description. We got Ronin in the crypto message, and then we got a hologram of Ronin's quarter panel. Check out the Ronin collection. Link in the description. Let's get started. Okay guys, first up, we're gonna take the front bumper off so we can access to getting the headlights out. I'm just gonna run through this really quick. Okay guys, taking out the headlights is pretty straightforward. Looking at the top here, then there's a little tab right back here that you can just pop right out. Holds this bracket on. Just comes out just like that, and then you're good to go. Okay guys, so here we have the headlight assembly. You guys can see that there used to be obviously that bracket on the bottom. It's just held in by one screw and then a little rubber pin that sits on, and then a little push pin on this end. It's just really easy to take out. So now, we're good to go. Now, I'm not baking these. Uh, what we're gonna do is use a heat gun and just heat up the uh, whole surface area. A couple things to note is once you do get the lens off, have a place for it ready. Normally you like wrap them in saran wrap. I'm just gonna put them like face first on like a clean like uh, towel or something, like a lint-free towel. Uh, we're gonna take our time. I'm probably gonna skip through a lot of this and uh, we're just gonna go for it. Oh. Oh. I'll hold this. You pull it. You pull it up. Yeah, there you go. Nice. Oh, so the lens is covered. Yeah, and then you unscrew those. Okay, I see how, that, that's oh, where you do all that's your work. that comes out. Yeah, that's how you do all yeah, your work. Yeah, because that looks like one piece. This is very cool. I've yeah. never ever seen a headlight taken apart before. So guys, cracking the headlights was a lot easier than I thought. From what you guys could see, I'm gonna explain pretty much the, the way that I did this. So I would heat up like the top. I would take a flathead screwdriver and just kind of wiggle my way through and kind of cut off a little first layer. I'd flip it over, do the same thing. And then the second layer, I'd heat it up again, but I'd go a little deeper to get it all. And then once I was done doing that around again, then I focused on uh, this corner, I really, that's where I was able to start prying it off. I could, if I was having little issues, I'd stick a flat head in there, work on the other side, and then pretty much just came off with heat. It was actually quite, quite straightforward. It wasn't hard at all, it just took a little bit of time. So what we're gonna be doing, this is day number two. Today is pulling out the things, the stuff. So if I'm looking at this correctly, to get this whole assembly out, all we need to do are remove two screws. Now when you guys are taking this apart, there's some glue left over, but the first thing you're gonna wanna do is face the lens down and put it on a lint-free surface. This is what you actually see in your headlight. We're gonna be doing a very basic build. The housing is already black, and it's a glossy black, and it actually looks quite nice. So I'm, obviously I'll clean it up a bit with a streak-free uh, microfiber or something. But what we're gonna be focusing on today, these chrome rings are gonna go uh, glossy, glossy black, so it's gonna be a different color, because this is like a, kind of like a piano black. We're just gonna spray the rings, but anything like the reflector inside is gonna stay. Uh, this whole thing is gonna go black, and this is gonna go black. And then the signal, now you guys need to be careful. 
Uh, it is illegal to remove this reflector. You need to have a reflector in your lens depending where you live. So I might just do an actual tint on this, just darken it up a bit, and I think that should look pretty cool. But other than that, uh, let's see how we get going with this. If I'm correct, just looking on the back, it looks like there's a bunch of taps that just you kind of pull apart. So uh, we're gonna see what we can do here. We're taking out the lenses. There's a bunch of pins that go around them. Uh, for example, like this. We're taking a flathead and popping them out, so I just did this one. Just like that. And then we have one of our housings out. We're gonna do the other ones here. Two that it looks like, so you can just go in there with the flathead. Be careful with these, because they do and will break. This one comes out along with the lens. That being said, here you have your empty headlight lens. Okay guys, a quick update here. So we've done our second layer. I am using uh, vinyl and fabric, gloss black. It's the only gloss black spray I have. And then I'm using VHT on the reflector lens. That's its second layer. I'm only gonna do two coats. And these are ready for paint. So this is done. Gotta do this one, do those, and then I'll probably do a third coat on these and then gloss them and we should be good. So we are on day three now. I have popped in my corner lens this is painted black because it's deletus. I had popped my side blinker in there and it's looking tight. We did some testing yesterday. We found out that the blinker flows toward the end of the light. <laughs> that was a clean cut. Oh, I didn't want this. You got a butterfly stitch. There you go. Cool, now I'm gonna figure out how to do this. Here I have a built lens. This is all epoxied in. I've epoxied right here, right here, right here, and I've epoxied behind here to hold it in at the top and up here as well. The hole's drilled uh, and then wires are all painted black. This wire's gonna swoop in from the bottom, but this is what it's gonna look like. So the Sequential is gonna go out this way. So I'm gonna walk you guys through on how I pretty much did this. It's a little scary, but once you kind of get it done and you know dealt with, it's uh, quite straightforward. So mounting the, the LED strip is our first step here. So we can pop this cap off and these are cuttable and I have a piece here so I can see how much I chopped. It's gonna sit approximately just like this bend up and then we'll come along and meet us at the top there. So what I'm gonna do is take this off again and then I'm gonna start peeling. We have the top that's in and then you can take your bottom just like that. Stick it down, double-sided tape will do this well. And there you guys have the LED strip mounted and then this wire, there is enough room where I'll just tuck it under. Uh, we gotta be pretty precise. So I know I want it to sit flat like the other one. So I'll want it exactly right here. And then the hole I will drill. Now that I have my mark out, I'm just gonna send the drill. And just like that, the wires will fit right through there. Perfect drill bit size. Uh, now the more difficult one to do is the uh, big one. With it in position, it's going to be approximately. And we have our holes drilled. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and cut these wires because we won't be able to fit this box through there. So uh, give some good distance, give them a snip. And then same with the other ones as well. We'll be good to go. So what we want to do is obviously just make sure that these do fit. So what we do is we run the wires through first. Well, that one didn't go as planned. <laughs> that was a missed drill. Now I'm gonna bring my epoxy and I'm going to start mixing. Okay, so we're gonna take a generous amount of epoxy. And, oh, I messed up. First, we need to mark where it's going. So I will do Sharpie because Sharpie is easy to take off. So if I look to see where it's going to be sitting here and right 
So take a good amount. We are going to do dab in the back part of the light because it will spread. Bring it into its position and we are going to slide it in right there. Wires and then I'm just gonna hold it for a minute or two so it can kind of dry a little bit. Pull the wires nice and tight. And then we're gonna flip this around. Angle it up the way you want it. So this one's already set. I'm gonna hold this one and let this one set. Okay guys, so this hasn't been put back together yet, but I did bolt the housing back onto the lens and then I uh, re-sanded and uh, coated or compounded my lens, buffed them out and everything, and they, they aren't too bad for pretty beat up lenses. Uh, next, what we're really aiming to do here, I mean, this is what it's gonna look like. It's gonna look pretty sick. Gluing them back on. I believe I'm on day five, and technically I could have glued these back on yesterday, but I didn't have enough time. Um, there's a couple important things to note before you do glue these back on, though, is uh, your wire running. So thankfully with these cars, we have a big, big um, hole behind the projector lens. So I'm just going to run everything behind the projector lens as in wired and run them out through the projector hole. And then I can put the seal on the back of the headlight housing if I want. That plan of attack and then all the top wires will go in that direction as well. When they, when they reseal headlights, they'll take all the glue out, fill this up again, class them together and let it dry. Some people that I know of will use the old glue, seal it back together so that it holds, but it doesn't actually seal, then they'll take a silicone and seal around the top. Probably not a good idea to use white. I didn't think it was gonna be a big deal, but it smooches in in some areas and you can kind of see it from some angles. But overall, does it seal? I don't know and I probably will never find out because I don't think this car is ever gonna see rain again. You guys are lucky if you saw me put together the headlights with adhesive. If I didn't put that in the video and just watch a video on how to do it professionally because there's no point in me showing you how I did it. It's disgusting. We're doing the wiring right now. Um, I'm gonna go over the wiring with you guys and uh, so you guys know how it works and all that uh, depending on how you know your your thing, your lights are. So with this halo kit, it comes with uh, this big ass relay harness because it's basically straightforward reading off the instructions. So this, there's kind of like a two switch system with the halo. So I can have the halos turn on with the headlight and I can also turn the halos on by themselves when the car is off. How we do that is off the relay, we have a negative and a power that goes straight to the battery uh, and then we have the um, obviously these that go to the light so these plug into the back of the light seen like right here and then they go up into the lights and then there's another wire which would be this uh, white one this is your in cab switch so I have a wire running into the cabin and then I have another red wire that I have jumped into the power of the headlight. I haven't hooked my switch up yet, but you can see the wire right there. But if I go ahead and turn my headlights on, turn on. It's really straightforward to figure out. So that's for the halos. And then when we get to the LED strip, now this one's a little fun. I have a switchback. So these show white all the time, unless my signal is on. So three wires come out of turn signal um, strip. And so the yellow one goes to the uh, the switch, the turn signal. So when you're getting the power, the power flashes, you want the yellow switch to that wire. The blue wire for me is uh, cons or your constant like white LED. So my red wire goes to that and then black is ground obviously. Your OEM harness is right here. So you would unplug this from here, put that in there and test out uh, with your signal on, when your uh, fog lamp's on, with your signal off, yada yada, you get the idea. How I'm doing this is, well, the halos have a harness, so I can't really do anything about that, but they do disconnect, which is nice in case I have to take the headlight lamps completely out of the car. Turn signal, I can't actually do that. So I'm rigging up uh, quick connectors here, uh, wrapping them in electrical tape, but quick connectors just in case I need to disconnect them. Because I guarantee you these won't be sealed and they will get more. So with that being said, we're pretty much done this. Uh, just finishing bolting up everything, letting everything dry, and then you guys are good to go. So I'm just finishing up the wire and I'll probably put them in the car and let them dry in the car because the car will be sitting in. Okay guys, the headlights are in. 
and fully functional. We have the bulb in here, but that bulb is not hooked up. And I'll explain why in a minute. Over here, we also have the bulb in here, but this bulb is hooked up. So as you guys can see here, we have the corner, the LED strip showing only. And then over here, we have the LED or the switchback bulb and the LED strip showing. This side looks better considering it's covering that whole corner. That bulb is not necessarily needed and you'll see why in a minute. So this one's a little bit more difficult to see because it is so bright, but there we go. So you guys can see the halos and the headlight bulb. So that is why I believe I'm going to decide to Keep the bulb in the headlights, but cancel it so that it doesn't display because this does enough. This just doesn't make sense. This looks quite dumb, right? And it's really clean make sure you look. And then if you look at the sequential, they blend in quite well. This one kind of shoots off into that and that continues while this one goes around. And so here we have, oh God, this looks gorgeous, uh, RGB headlight with the LED strip. Now, unfortunately, our switch isn't hooked up yet. What we can do in the sense is this could be off while we have the halos on, or we could have all of this on because when my headlight switch turns on, this RGB turns white. Those, dude, those, those are killer. All right, guys, that is our final look at the Mazda 3's headlights. Hopefully it was kind of followable. I know I was kind of hit and miss in some area. I was also learning, but it's kind of straightforward and like for certain things, I definitely watch uh, like watch this video so you have an idea on how to do it on your Mazdas and then watch an actual professional do it so you guys don't make mistakes like I did. Like for example, sealing the headlight. Um, like I said, I don't know if these are actually sealed properly or not. So the final look at them, they look quite gorgeous. If you guys want to see us wire in the switch for the halos, a separate switch to turn on the halos on and off. And if you guys want to see us do the uh, signal delete and then wire in the uh, LED strip to the turn signal socket, then I will definitely do that. Just let me know down in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to hit the subscribe button, leave a like on the video, comment down below, ring the post notification bell. But other than that guys, thank you guys so much. This has been awesome. Um, these turned out excellent and I can't wait to get everything started rolling on this. Keep it real. I'll see y'all in the next <laughs> one. <laughs> what the <f> <laughs> <laughs>